learn more about how these rates are determined and how to improve them. Performance bond and payment bond rates are determined by three factors. These include the class of business that is being bonded, the underwriting strength of the contractor being bonded, and the surety bonds company's filed rates in the state where the work is being performed. The first factor in performance bond cost is class of business. The class of business refers to the type of work that is being bonded and the perceived risk associated with that type of work. Most construction work falls into one of four categories. These include Class B, Class A, Class A1, and subdivision bonds. Class A1 is considered the least risky from a surety bond perspective. Asphalt paving falls into Class A1. Why is this type of work considered less risky? Consider that a performance bond guarantees the completion of work under a contract. Under normal circumstances, if an asphalt paving contractor cannot perform, a bond company could likely find another contractor to complete the contract for a similar price. Additionally, if work needs to be corrected, it can usually be milled up and replaced easily. Class A work is considered more risky than A1, but less risky than Class B. Class A work includes scopes such as concrete paving, roofing, and others. Class B is considered more risky than Class A. Class B construction includes MEP, general construction, and others. From a surety perspective, this carries more risk because a default will likely cost the bond company more. A new contractor will charge significantly more than the bonded contractor to complete the contract because they incur more risk. Work may also need to be torn out and corrected. Completion bonds or subdivision bonds are considered the most risky in this group. That is because these bonds require the contractor and surety bond company to complete a contract even if payment is not received. The second factor in determining performance and payment bond rates is the bond company's filed rates for that state. Although often similar, each bond company files a number of rates for each class of business in the states that they operate. These different rates give them flexibility to charge contractors of the same class different rates based on their underwriting strength. It is common for local underwriters to have the ability to debit or credit their rates up or down 20%. The third factor is the strength of the company. Contractors with more working capital, more net worth, and more experience qualify for better rates. It is important to note that some bond companies give everyone in a grouping the same bond rate. This is referred to as a class rate. For example, all Class B general contractors with an analyzed net worth between $1 million and $2 million with a reviewed financial statement receive the same rate. In order to qualify for a better rate with this bond company, a contractor must either increase the company's analyzed net worth or upgrade to an audited financial statement. Bond companies using this strategy believe it creates fairness between their contractor clients. Other bond companies have no such class rates. These bond companies give their underwriters and agents the ability to negotiate rates based on market conditions for each account. Now that we have discussed what factors go into contract bond rates, let's look at how they are calculated. Surety bond rates are expressed as a cost per $1,000 of guarantee. For example, if an underwriter quotes a $25 rate, it is $25 per $1,000 of contract value. You'll notice that this is a complicated way to say 2.5%. Let's look at an example. If you have a $25 flat rate and you need a performance bond on a $1 million project, you would divide $1 million by 1,000. This calculation equals 1,000. Then you would multiply that 1,000 times your $25 rate, which would give you $25,000. This would be your performance bond cost for that project. Things get more complicated when you have a deviated rate. A deviated rate means that the rate changes based on the project size. The rate will get smaller as the project gets bigger. A standard $25 Class B deviated rate, known in the industry as a 25 slide, 
This rate is typically $25 for the first $100,000 of contract value, then $15 for the next $400,000 of contract value, and then $10 for the next $2 million of contract value. Here's how that would be calculated. Let's go back to our $1 million performance bond example. First, we must take the first $100,000 of value divided by 1,000. This gives us 100. We take that 100 and multiply it by our $25 rate. The amount is $2,500. Next, we take the next $400,000 of contract value and divide it by 1,000 and it gives us 400. We take this 400 and multiply it by our next rate of $15. This gives us $6,000. Finally, we take our last $500,000 of contract value and divide it by $1,000. This gives us 500. We multiply that by our rate of $10. This gives us $5,000. We must now add up those three rate calculations. $2,500 plus $6,000 plus $5,000 gives us our performance bond cost of $13,500 for a $1 million surety bond. Now that you know how the rate is calculated, we can talk about shortcuts. The rate divided by 1,000 is just a percentage, so instead of dividing by 1,000, we can just use 2.5% for the first $100,000 of value. 1.5% for the next $400,000 of contract value, and 1% of the next $500,000 of contract value. This helps simplify things. Of course, if you do not want to do the calculation, you find a bond premium calculator at Access Surety that does the work for you. Simply enter in your rates and the contract amount. The bond premium will then be calculated for you. Payment bond rates are calculated the exact same way as performance bond rates. However, there is only one premium when both bonds are written together. When a $1 million project requires a performance bond and payment bond, there is only one premium. In a sense, the project owner is getting twice the protection for one cost. However, only requiring one of these bonds does not reduce the cost. A performance bond with a payment bond is the same cost as a performance bond without a payment bond and vice versa. Other factors can impact performance and payment bond costs. One of those is design-build projects. Design-build projects carry more risk to contractors and bond companies, even when those risks are subcontracted to a licensed design professional. Bond companies charge more for these risks by surcharging the contractor's normal rate. Depending on the bond company, these surcharges can range from 10% to 50% of the normal bond cost. Let's assume it's a 20% surcharge and use our $25 Class B deviated rate from before. The contractor's performance bond rate would be $30 or 3% for the first $100,000 of contract value. $18 or 1.8% for the next $400,000 of contract value, and $12 or 1.2% for the next $400,000 of contract value. You simply multiply the existing bond rate by 1.2 or whatever the surcharge is. Another factor that can impact performance and payment bond cost is completion time. Long-term projects create more risk for the contractor and the bond company. Therefore, standard rates are for projects that can be completed in 12 months or less. Projects that take longer to complete are subject to a time completion surcharge. Usually this surcharge is 1% per month for each month longer than 12 months. Let's look at an example. Let's say our project from before takes 20 months to complete. We take the 20 months and subtract the normal 12 months, giving us 8 extra months. 8 months multiplied times 1% a month gives us 8%. We take our $13,500 performance bond premium and multiply it times 8%. This gives us a completion time surcharge of $1,080. We add this $1,080 to the standard bond premium of $13,500 to give us our total bond cost for the project of $14,580. 
Another very common factor affecting performance bond rates is additional maintenance or warranty periods. When writing a performance bond, most bond companies include up to 12 months of maintenance at no additional cost. Some will go as much as 24 months without charging additional premium, but 12 months is the norm. Any additional maintenance period will carry an additional charge on the bond. Additional maintenance rates are calculated using the same formula as standard bond rates. A rate scale may be $2.50 for the first $100,000 of contract value, $2.25 for the next $400,000 of contract value, and $2 for the next $500,000 of contract value. Using our $1 million performance bond example, we see that multiplying $100,000 times 0.25% equals $250. Then we multiply $400,000 times 0.225%, which gives us $900. Finally, multiplying $500,000 times 0 0.20 gives us $1,000. We add the three together and figure out that each additional year of maintenance will cost an additional $2,150. Again, we would add this premium to our base cost of $13,500 to give us a total bond cost of $15,650 with the extra maintenance. Maintenance rates are fairly low when they are included with performance bonds. However, be aware that most bond companies charge significantly higher rates if a maintenance-only bond is needed. The bond premium for these maintenance bonds also starts right away instead of after 12 months. If a surety bond company requires a contractor to use tools to write a performance or payment bond, it will also add to the cost. Bond companies use tools to reduce their risk. Three tools that can be used to help write performance bonds include Funds Control or Escrow, the SBA Surety Bond Guarantee Program, and Collateral. Most bond companies outsource Funds Control. The cost for funds control is generally between 0.5% and 1% of the total contract being bonded. The SBA Bond Guarantee Program costs 0.6% of the contract being bonded. Collateral cost usually depends on what type and often the contractor's lender if an irrevocable letter of credit is used. If these tools are required, the cost is added to the normal